How can you control your lights with Ableton Live? How can you set up Ableton Live so that your backing tracks are perfectly in sync with your lights so you can create a connected stage experience? Well, in this tutorial, I wanna help you answer a couple questions, give you some resources to help you as quickly as possible decide what's the best way to run lights for you and your band and how can you control them with Ableton Live. Now, it's important to note, there's really two approaches when it comes to controlling lights uh, with Ableton Live. Um, one is this internal approach, and that's the idea of programming all of your lights in Ableton Live. Uh, opening Ableton Live and having some sort of plugin, some sort of resource that will allow you to program lights directly in Ableton Live. The other option here is uh, external control using Ableton Live to control something externally. What I wanna do really quickly in about two minutes is look at both some internal approaches and some external approaches and talk about which one is best, not just in general, but what's best for you. I'm gonna give you some things to consider that will help you really quickly get there. And then just wrap up with some really quick, uh, quick pointers on um, what I think is the most common way that people control and trigger lights. So let's start at the top and talk about internal control. I wanna program lights directly in Ableton Live. What are resources that will allow me to do that? Uh, number one, I think the first thing you should check out is Beam by ShowSync. Uh, this is a plugin that you can load, a set of plugins, in fact, that you can load uh, into Ableton Live um, that will allow you to program lights directly from Ableton. So you need some sort of USB box to convert uh, from USB to, uh, to DMX, which is great. So you could see uh, that you could do that there. Uh, you could also do this over ArtNet, which is really, really cool. Uh, to control lights directly from Ableton Live. A lot of really cool possibilities. Okay, let's run through a couple other solutions. And I've got links to all these in the description of this video. Uh, the next one is Show Buddy Active. If you're familiar with uh, DMXs, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, this is kind of the new updated version uh, of this, right? Now, uh, what's really nice is this is a plugin that you can load into your Ableton Live set uh, so that you can control lights and do some really cool stuff with it. Now, I did mention DMXs. Third option I wanna mention here for internal control is DMXs. This is no longer um, created. I don't think it's even supported anymore, but if you've got one of these uh, blue boxes that converts uh, USB over to uh, DMX, uh, this could be a great solution for you. A lot of us still have these, so I actually did a controlling DMXs with Ableton Live course. You can find the link to that in the description of this video. In fact, I'll link to the preview lesson that I have for that course because it's still a really great solution if you're looking for internal control. Um, so what's right for you? Should you do internal control or external control? Well, let's talk about internal control. When should you choose that? If you are in charge, if you're the person that's making the decision, uh, you're running tracks and you're programming lights, uh, you're doing a simple lighting setup, which means maybe you're in a, a cover band and you travel with all your own lights. So every time you show up to a venue, you set up your music gear, you set up your lights, it's consistent, it's the same every time. And again, most importantly, you're the person that's in charge of it. You're probably the poor drummer that got handed the computer for tracks, and now you're also being the lighting designer, lighting programmer for this. If that's you, I think you should maybe consider internal control, and here's why. If you're on stage running tracks, playing keys, playing drums, playing guitar, whatever it is, and you need to tweak a lighting look, it's really nice to have that program on your computer uh, to be able to just move uh, you know, a piece of information around. Final note on internal control. If you're doing internal control, I would highly suggest that you just consider MIDI notes. You can add MIDI notes into Ableton Live, uh, put them right alongside your track, pre-program your lights so that uh, as it hits a MIDI note, it triggers a lighting look. If you need to tweak it, go, go into your song, your set, and just nudge that to get it just right. Um, that's again right for some people, but it's not right for everyone. When should you consider external control? Actually, first, let's talk about some options for external control, and then we'll talk about when you should consider that. So let's jump back over to your computer here. Uh, really popular options for external control, light key. Uh, if you've seen any of Jake Goslin and the church front folks stuff, they use light key a lot. It's a, it's a, a software you can run on Mac that lets you uh, control your lights. Uh, seems like a really great solution. In fact, I've got on my list uh, by the end of this year to do a controlling light key with Ableton Live course for from studio to stage subscribers, because I've had so many people ask about it. A uh, great solution there. One that I have used uh, quite a bit or uh, in the past I used quite a bit was Vista by Chroma Q. It used to be called Jans Vista, uh, but it's a software-based solution that lets you control lights um, uh, using a computer software that again, you can then convert to send DMX out of that. Uh, one that I've used most recently is Luminaire. This is a iPad uh, based um, uh, app. I guess technically it's Mac OS as well too, which is pretty cool. I didn't even know that. But you could run Luminaire on your iPad um, apparently 
certainly an iPhone as well too, or Mac OS, uh, and send DMX uh, commands uh, out of this. You can also do Artnet. Well, it tells you here, you can do a lot of different stuff. But this is a really simple, great app. Uh, in fact, one of the last live playback things I did was a live performance where we automated lyrics and lighting and stuff. And the, the LD for that particular show is more of a uh, kind of music video recording. Uh, he decided to use Luminaire, and so we automated that with Ableton, which was really simple to do. And also, side note, uh, if you're doing that, I have a course showing you how to control Luminaire with Ableton Live. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Okay, back, meanwhile, back to the ranch. Uh, Grand MA. Uh, this is probably one of the, the number one um, uh, things on the road, a full blown lighting console. Um, I believe with Grain of May, there's some like PC based software that you can run uh, to do this as well too. Uh, but this is what, oh yeah, there you go. Mac OS and PC, I should see that. Um, you can run the software. You could also do the console. This is what I think most people are out on the road using. Um, Roadhog is another solution I've seen a lot of people use by ETC. ETC makes some other consoles as well too. Um, uh, again, this is like the idea of a lighting console. It's a little more expensive. It's a little more probably dedicated uh, person, you know, doing this sort of thing. Um, uh, so those are some, some external control solutions. Now, when should you choose an external control solution? Well, again, if you're not in charge and you're not the boss, you're not calling the shots, you're working with an LD, you're working with someone else that's programming lights, please, 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 for the sake of you, me, and everyone involved, please consider external control. Meaning, let the LD do their lights, let them be in charge of all of that, and all you're in charge of is running backing tracks, okay? Uh, more complex lighting, you need external control. Please don't try to do that internally, okay? So if you're gonna do external control, what does this look like, how do we do it? Well, more common than not, you're gonna control that console via LTC or MTC. Uh, if you're using LTC, you need to go, uh, take you back over here, you need to go to from studiosage.com slash timecode and download my free timecode template. Here's how this works. You go into Ableton Live, uh, you add a new audio file and we're gonna call this timecode, right? I should be using an audio interface, so let's let's uh, fake an audio interface here for the sake of this tutorial. I'm gonna use an audio interface and use an, an output that uh, is not used up for anything else. So let's say output 12. I'm not currently using that. Okay, and for this song, I need to talk to my LD. Okay, what frame rate are we running at? Okay, we'll run at 29.97. So I'm gonna drop this song in and I'm gonna drop that time code in. I'm gonna tell my lighting uh, designer, okay, this time code file runs, uh, this song runs from uh, this uh, hour, minute, second, to this hour, minute, second frame in time code. Now, uh, again, I don't have tons and tons of time to show you this in detail, but essentially what I do is drop that time code file into Ableton Live. I go and route this out to a specific output, making sure that's separate from my stems, and then that goes into my lighting console. So um, if you're doing time code, which I would suggest you do if you're doing external control, again, as a reminder, head to from studiosage.com slash timecode but it's possible you need MIDI timecode. I would suggest in that case that you uh, go to the link I've put in the description of this video to check out Live MTC. Live MTC basically trans, uh, translates uh, Live's transport. So I'm at measure three, uh, beat two. I'm at measure five, beat seven. Um, uh, it translates that into uh, MIDI timecode information. So if you're working with a lighting console where the lighting designer is expecting uh, MIDI timecode, then uh, download Live MTC. It's a free solution. It does require Max for Live, so you've got to have Ableton Live Suite or have purchased the Max for Live add-on. Um, but you can drop that into your Ableton Live set and you can send live MTC directly from Ableton Live. Now, I think that's what most, most of us are gonna use. It's possible you may be um, using uh, MSC MIDI show control. If so, I've got a MIDI to MIDI show control template that you can download on uh, the From Studio Stage site. Uh, you can pay full price for it or you can become a subscriber and use your credits to get it for free. I'll link that up in the description of the video, but I wanna stress, um, in my years and years of experience, uh, just do as much as possible, do your best to use timecode to use LTC or MTC um, so that you don't have to be in charge. You can hand this off to someone else and they can be in charge of that. Uh, if you are performing on stage with Ableton Live, if you're looking to create a connected stage experience, I wanna ask you to consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon. I post a brand new tutorial every single day at 10 a.m. Central. Sundays right now are dedicated just to the connected stage. So we're gonna continue talking about controlling lights, video, lyrics. We'll do some specific run throughs, maybe a specific light key tutorial, uh, but make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. Here's what I need from you though. In addition to that, leave a comment below to let me know, are you currently automating lights? Um, if so, let me know what you're using. If not, let me know what you hope to use. And if you want to throw a bonus in there, what would you like to see more tutorials on? Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.